So what are boundaries? Well, it's probably a good analogy to imagine them like invisible force fields that protect someone from feeling hurt. And there are a wide range of boundaries that we should all have, from how people use our time, to how people treat our personal belongings, and also how they interact and talk to us. These healthy boundaries allow both people in a relationship to openly communicate about their feelings and needs and then to actually say, you know what, this isn't working for me, please stop that. Now sadly, a lot of us don't realise that people are not respecting our boundaries and it's probably because we were never aware of what the boundaries were in the first place. So let's make this nice and easy and zoom down into the boundaries that women want so that they feel respected in relationships. Get ready for a deep psychology class. Like and subscribe. Let's go. Managing your time. Like I mentioned at the start of this video, time is a huge boundary. So you need to make sure that you can manage your own time correctly so that it doesn't disrespect and flow into some disruption into your partner's time boundaries. Some examples of this could be to make sure that you are ready and leaving your house at a certain time on date night, or if you have a dinner date set up with friends, you get there on time. And making sure that you have enough time to tidy up after yourself so that your partner doesn't have to pick up your dirty washing. Protection of her possessions. Some people want to have a single bank account and others in relationships have a joint account, which basically means whatever each person makes goes into an account together and then bills come out and then what they have left over is money they can play around with. However, let's say for example, you end up dating a lady that doesn't want to have a joint account and prefers to have her own. If this is true, then the boundary is that you respect it and you stop pushing and pushing in order for her to open up a joint one. Now let's talk about some protection of her own belongings. This means she doesn't want you to go through her stuff, for example, a memory box or even her journal, or to play around with decorations and ornaments. This also ties into making sure that if you borrow anything of hers, that it's always returned in the same quality. It's always maintained in that looked after high quality condition. Okay, let's move over to some physical needs of boundaries. This could be as simple as your partner wants to live in a house where no one wears shoes. Therefore, it would be disrespectful of you to walk around the house wearing your shoes. Or it could be something very severe. For example, maybe she has a specific dietary requirement. Therefore, you should not eat her food. Let's say, for example, she's a diabetic. She needs to have enough stuff to build up her insulin. This also means that if your partner states that she doesn't want to go out to a steakhouse restaurant because she's not a meat eater, then you have to compromise and you have to respect that and not book a surprise dinner table at a steakhouse. Not imposing opposite beliefs. A lady does not want to be forced to change her mind on something. Maybe she is open to learning new ways of thinking, but you should never pressure her to adopt your view. Maybe you both have different political parties that you vote for. Obviously, you cannot force someone else through your own force measures to take your side. And if you are, however, dating someone with different views to you and it really does bother you, you are probably just better off ending things and finding someone else that does share your views. Spiritual beliefs. This one flows in nicely with that previous point I made. Your lady may have a belief in spirituality or even a religion, and perhaps you are an atheist. So you have to respect the boundary and accept her belief and you leave it at that. That means you should not tell her she is silly for owning crystals or tarot cards. And you merely say, you know what, babe, I don't really understand it, but you do you, that's okay. And you never try to change her. The sexual boundary. I am going to say it, society has made many men, not all guys, but many men believe that us ladies are always ready for you know what, that we are crazy enthusiastic to get down and dirty with guys and that we don't really need much stimulation physically or emotionally to have a happy ending. Now, a lot of younger guys grow up watching an assortment of videos. You know exactly what I'm on about. And this creates a very flawed concept of the sexuality of a lady. So in the real world, a woman does not want to be pressured into doing something she isn't comfortable with. 
And of course, you can talk about your needs, but if a partner declines something and it's a hard no in the bedroom, you should not force them into doing it. You shouldn't be trying to slowly persuade them to change their mind either. Sexual boundaries are vital in relationships. And sadly, let's be real, you may not always get the exact fantasy that you get to play out. Or maybe you don't get that need fulfilled that you hope for. And it's simple yet brutal as this. You either accept what your partner brings to the table in regards to sexuality and you never pester and you don't try to change their mind. Or if you can't handle that, you break things off and you find someone else better suited. Asking for space. Most of us probably hear the words, I just need some space, and then we panic and we feel that it's the start of the end, when really it's not. Both partners need to be able to say, I need some space, I will be back in touch when I'm ready, and the other partner doesn't really need to know why they need that space and they should not try to change their mind. Space is perfectly healthy. Now, if you don't really understand why your partner has asked for space, then you can say, look, I don't really understand if I done something wrong. And your partner can say, look, everything's okay. I just need a couple of introverted days to recharge and that's okay. So respect your partner's wish for space and you welcome it. This act of space builds a relationship when both partners know that they can go and do their own thing and come back together without any judgment. Space in relationships does get very muddied because a lot of couples assume that you need to do everything with your partner all of the time. Go out in the friend groups together, attend the same sports classes and follow the same interests and passions. And this is not good because merging completely with your partner is very unhealthy and a sign of codependency. So you are allowed to tell your partner, but this is my hobby. It's something that I do with my friends and I really would appreciate if I just get to keep this between me and them. I wanna keep this separate from our relationship. And this is a perfectly valid thing to say. The boundary of accepting blame. This one hurts. No one wants to admit that they were wrong or worse, admit that they did something that hurt someone else's feelings. However, a lady will respect you for this boundary. If a lady calls you out and says, when you did this, it really hurt me. The right way to respond is, I'm so sorry that I hurt your feelings. I will not do it again. Instead of saying you are too weak, that's your problem, not mine, you're too sensitive. Taking responsibility for your actions is incredibly sexy. Respecting the word no. This kind of ties in all of the previous pieces of advice together. If your lady says no to something, you need to respect that and accept no means no. It doesn't mean that you can get her to say no two times and then she'll change her mind the third time. It doesn't mean you can persuade her or tell her that she's overreacting. And of course, you can assertively say no to something and she should respect that too. Respect, not aggression. Both yourself and your lady are allowed to walk away from a conversation if one of you is speaking aggressively or with anger. Now, anger is a very powerful emotion and it usually comes out as a secondary emotion when we haven't truly paid attention to our initial feelings. Let's say, for example, your partner could be late getting ready. Therefore, you both turn up to your friend's dinner party late. So initially, you felt disrespected that your partner was late and a little bit embarrassed for turning up late knowing you held up all of your friends. Now, if you don't actually come to terms with those initial feelings, instead, it gets pushed down, you quickly result to anger and the anger is never justified. I have heard many people say, I'm angry because you did this. When really, let's think about it, you chose to be angry. The anger was not directly created through that initial response. It's a secondary emotion because you didn't accept the initial feelings. So back to my point, if you or your partner becomes aggressive when you speak, the other person is allowed to say, hey, that's not good. I'm gonna remove myself from this situation. Please calm down. Accepting help. Our partners are not our saviors. They are not our therapists. They are not our personal cooks or our personal cleaners. They are someone that we love and connect with on an emotional level. And girls want you to respect your own need for help. Of course, your lady is expecting to be there for you in your time of need. Let's say, for example, you experience a death in the family. She would be expected to support you and to not get angry if you need some time off and want to spend more of your downtime investing in hobbies to keep your mind engaged. 
However, a boundary breaker is if you expected her to help you through the grieving process and to take the role of a therapist. In these tough times, there are people who are better at this. They are trained and experienced to help you with a wide range of skills and being able to understand that you are asking too much of your partner and knowing when to seek external help is a big act of self-care and growth. So let's switch that script. If your partner is constantly emotionally offloading onto you about her past trauma or even issues at the workplace, you are not expected to stand there and take it in and be a therapist. You are allowed to say, babe, I understand that what you're going through is really tough and I'm so thankful that you're reaching out for me to help with your healing. However, it's starting to affect me and the relationship as I feel that I'm giving too much and it's wearing me out. I think it's best if you see a therapist or a counsellor so that you have someone to talk to and offload with that isn't me. If you think I missed something from today's video, let me know down in the comments. Give me a huge thumbs up and consider subscribing to make my day. But if you want to get your name rolling up next to my face like these amazing people's names here, then all you have to do is click the link in the description bar below to find out a little bit more. Have an amazing day. See you soon.